Well, good morning, good morning, and praise ye the Lord. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Faith Lights Fellowship's uh, virtual Sunday service. Uh, today is April 14th, 2024. We are at the midway point of the month of April. We give God praise. We give God praise for this day, for this month, and the year thus far. Um, I, I'm so grateful to be back with you. We were out last week due to the illness, but I am, uh, I am back and fully restored in the name of Jesus. Uh, we've come to worship the resurrected lamb of God. We've come to resur uh, to lift up the resurrected king of kings. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Come on and praise. Give him a praise wherever you are. Amen and amen and amen. You're not doing it to please a man. You're not doing it to please pastor. You're doing it to worship and please the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God, the word of God says he inhabits the praises of his people. He inhabits the praises of his people. You want to get God's attention? Give him praise. Give him worship. Give him praise and worship. You want to get his attention? You can't get it through complaining and whining. It comes through worship. It comes through humbling ourselves before a holy and a mighty God. Amen and amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer today. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that you are a holy God. You are my father. You're our father. And we worship you today. We give you thanks. We give you praise, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you are our soon coming king. His name is Jesus. And we worship the name that's above every name. His name is Jesus. Father God, heal our diseases. Father God, break the bondages of yoke in the uh, the yokes of bondages in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I speak liberty, healing, Father God, to your people around the world. In Jesus' name, Amen and Amen. Well, God bless you. God bless you. Welcome to Faith Life Fellowships online virtual service. Today again is April fourteenth, twenty twenty four. We're so happy to uh, be with you. Uh, thank you for connecting with us. And uh, many of you, uh, you tune in uh, week in and week out. We so uh, appreciate uh, you. And we pray that you are growing in the fear and admonition of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You're growing in the word. You're growing in the word. And uh, my wife and I, we send our greetings to you wherever you are around this earth, Sierra Leone. Uh, we we know that you're 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 tuning in Ethiopia. We know that you're tuning in Nigeria. We know that you're tuning in South Africa. Uh, we know that you're tuning in. We give God praise for you, my brothers and sisters in the Philippines. We greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, my brothers and sisters in California. Uh, Riverside, San Bernardino, we greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus. Uh, we, we, we are so appreciative of our brothers and sisters here in Dallas and all around the United States. Uh, if I didn't call your city or your country, we are so thankful for you. We're so thankful for you. Um, um, the just responses have been overwhelming. Uh, my son's going to put at the end of the message, he's going to put our our closing screen up. And if you would like to uh, reach out to us for booking inquiries, um, um, you can uh, find our uh, contact information uh, as, as, as always, this Facebook page, YouTube. You can find our contact uh, information. God bless you. We love you. We're praying for you. We pray God's very best, very best in your life. Amen. And amen, amen, to the glory of God. Our scripture verse of the week um, comes from Romans chapter 3. And the word of God says, for all have sinned 
all have sinned. This is why we celebrate the cross, right? This is why we celebrate uh, Resurrection Sunday, because he died for all of us, all, for all have sinned. There's none perfect except he that hung on a cross. We all, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. When I reflect and think about my own life, every day I have to repent several times because I want to stay clean before him. Understanding that sin is a blocker. So when we acknowledge our sin, it glorifies God. Amen? Because all are justified freely by his grace. Thank you, Lord. Through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus, his son. Amen and amen. Boy, I feel that. You want to stay tuned. We're going to start a new series today, The Wonders of the Cross. Um, I Oh, I'm so excited for next week. I'm excited today, but for next week, as we talk about the power of God, the power of God, the cross, amen and amen. Well, I, I, I said it already, and I'm going to go ahead and have my son put our scripture assignment for today. Uh, um, up and so uh, we are going to start a new series and I told my wife a few weeks ago I believe God is leading me to in the heart of God series and I believe that's come to a, a, a completion and we ended that resurrection Sunday uh, that was part eight amen and so uh, we were out last week or I was out last week because of illness but I'm praise God I'm restored I'm on the men and God I thankful for Jehovah Rapha, for he is my healer. Amen and amen. Uh, today is part one of our new series, The Wonders of the Cross. Wonders of the Cross, uh, and today's part one. And so you'll find my assignment, uh, at least our assignment, Numbers uh, 21. I'm going to read the New Living Translation today. You can read the NIV. They're pretty close. But there were some key words that I really liked the way the New Living Translation translated this. And so Numbers 21, verses 4 through 9, uh, you'll find our assignment. Numbers, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, the Torah. Here we go. Thank you, son. Then the people of Israel set out from Mount Or, taking the road to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. The Edomites were a very hostile people towards the Israelites. And so Moses uses wisdom and leads the people around them. I don't know who this is for, but when you know that there's hostilities from others towards you, don't push the button. Just go around. In fact, the word of God says that we are to pursue peace, not conflict. There's a time for war. There's a time for peace. Taking the road to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. I could stop right there, but that's not my teaching today. But the people grew impatient with the long journey. And they began to speak against God and Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die here in the wilderness? They complained. There is nothing to eat here and nothing to drink. And we hate. That's a strong word. This horrible manna. That was the bread of heaven. They hated it. So the Lord sent venomous or poisonous snakes among the people 
and many were bitten and died. Then the people came to Moses and cried out, we have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take away the snakes. So Moses prayed for the people. He was a good pastor. Then the Lord told him, make a replica of a poisonous or venomous snake and attach it to a pole. All who are bitten will live, catch this, if they simply look at it. All who are bitten will live if they simply look at it. So Moses made a snake out of bronze and attached it to a pole. Then anyone who was bitten by a snake could look at the bronze snake and be healed. Good God that you are. Won't be before you very long today. I, I've entitled the first segment of our series, The Wonders of the Cross, The Healing Pole. Yeah. Yeah. Holy Spirit, I need your anointing. Father God, anoint these lips of clay. Cleanse me of my sins. Father, allow us to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to us in this hour through this message in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The healing pole, the healing pole. He's a healer. I told you he's Jehovah Rapha. He's a He's a healer. Anyone who was bitten by a snake could look at the bronze snake and be healed. God wants to heal your diseases. God wants to heal your sickness. God wants to heal your infirmities. God wants to heal you of your addictions in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, greetings and welcome to all of you. It's good to be back. I don't like missing uh, teaching uh, my uh, weekly assignments, but um, sometimes God gives us a time out, a break, a rest, uh, so that he can uh, rejuvenate us uh, reset and so on and so forth. So it's good to it's good to be back uh, with you, um, and uh, we'll be out uh, maybe a week or two in the month of May and June and July as my son graduates from high school and gets ready for college and so on and so forth. So um, we'll be in uh, at times uh, not broadcasting. Nothing's wrong, but uh, we uh, uh, certainly want to support and minister to our our children in Jesus name amen and amen the book of Genesis chapter 3 records the fateful interaction between the serpent and the woman and subsequently the sin of Adam and Eve which would set into motion a number of events. I can bring to your remembrance, God comes looking for them and they hear the sound of God's voice walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Did you catch that? The sound of his voice walking. And he calls out to them, and, of course, God is all-knowing, so I'm not going to say unbeknownst to him. Of course he knew. Of course he knew. They didn't know. 
they didn't know. Much like us, we, we don't know. He knows everything. Nonetheless, they're hiding amongst the trees because they heard the sound of the voice of God walking. It's amazing how when we sin, when we do something wrong, even babies, children, even our pets, uh, when they know that they've done something wrong, they, they hide. It's just in us. We, we, we hide. We hide from the truth. We hide from the truth. See, God cannot deny himself. He's light. He's truth. And so they, uh, God happens upon them and they come out from where they are and he said that we hid from you because we, we were naked. And God says immediately, who told you you were naked? Who told you? And well, Adam places the blame on his wife and so on and so forth. And God begins to deal with sin. And so these events that um, uh, come into play or begin to come into motion as a result of their, their failure, um, there were several things that the scripture in Genesis chapter 3, I don't want to read it all and I didn't want to make it my text today, only to say that these events, the first event that happened would be, and I didn't put it on the on the screen, so you'll just have to listen. I should, perhaps should have put it down for you to, to see it. But number one, the first thing I'd like you to know is that sin would enter into humanity as a result of Adam and Eve's failure to heed the word of God. Sin was born. Sin was born. Uh, so it would enter into humanity forever. We're still dealing with this even to this day. Number two, spiritual death occurred. Spiritual death occurred and thus spiritual separation from God spiritual separation from God. Number three, spiritual warfare between the serpent and mankind was now in motion. Perpetual spiritual warfare between the serpent and mankind would forever now, okay, be in play. If you read Genesis chapter three, God says, I will put enmity between you and the woman, your seed and her seed. That word enmity is hatred. Hatred. Got any haters? Perpetual spiritual warfare was now upon Adam and Eve, was now upon the earth. Number four, your desire shall be for your husband. There would be perpetual conflict in relationships between husband and wife. There would be perpetual conflict. My wife and I have been married nearly, we'll make 29 years in May. It's not been easy, but we're com committed to one another. Marriage is a covenant, is a covenant. Um, and yes, there's been conflict, there's been disappointments, there's been anger, um, there's been sorrow, there's been joy, um, there's been probably more difficulties than we would ever imagine. Perpetual conflict in relationships between husband and wife. The next thing God's told uh, um, Eve was, there shall be pain, and pain you shall bring uh, forth children. So pain in childbirth, pain in childbirth. I really should have put this on the screen, and I apologize for it. Number six, now he's talking to, uh, to, to Adam. You're going to toil in the field. It's 
going to be difficult in the field. Number eight, difficulties in life. Difficulties in life. You're going to toil in the field. There's going to be difficulties in life. And number eight, you must work hard for everything earned, desired, and wanted. Adam and Eve's sin set into motion um, uh, some very difficult circumstances for, 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 for mankind. Uh, nothing would ever come easy. And it certainly, even as my wife and I have looked back on our marriage and raising our children and certain and so forth, and we certainly make mistakes and so on and so forth, but nothing will come easy. Welcome to life due to our sin nature. Welcome to life uh, due to the sin nature, our sin nature. Uh, welcome to life of those who give into the works of the flesh and live for the works of the flesh, which are the works of the devil the temptations of the devil. What are those works of the flesh? Paul addresses this in Galatians chapter five, verses 19 through 21. We don't like to talk about it, but I'm gonna say it today. The acts or the works of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Galatians chapter 6, he further speaks in the next chapter, and he says, Forever, uh, for he who sows to the flesh will reap, uh, will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. I wish I would have known this 20, 30 years ago. I've made so many mistakes. I've got some doozies of sins. We are tempted through various situations and people. It's the enemy when this happens, when she strikes out at you, when he strikes out at you. Oftentimes, it's the enemy beckoning us to fight. Come on out here. Come out here. Yeah, get in the flesh. It's a spiritual battle, you understand. Paul says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers. The manifestation is inside of that person that can't stand you. The manifestation is inside of that situation. It's a call to war. The temptation of sin. And the more we resist or give in to the uh, temptations, it's a choice, right? The more we resist or give in to the temptations of the enemy or the temptations of the flesh, the more or less power and authority we have. I'm going to say that again. The more we resist or give in to temptations, the more or less power and authority we have. James 1 and 13 and 15 through 15 says, let no uh, one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. It's not God. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. When we act upon those temptations, then, we, then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's full grown, brings forth death. Eve, taking the words of the serpent in chapter 3, that it was the tree uh, that they were forbidden to eat from was good for wisdom and good for knowledge and so on and so forth, uh, she reasoned with the enemy and took of the flesh. Or should I say, took of the fruit. When desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. They experience spiritual death. Not physical death, but they experienced 
spiritual death. Pastor, can I experience a, a physical death? Depends on what sin you're involved in. Yes, you can get shot and killed. Uh, being an adulterer, or messing with someone's wife or husband. As a result of sin, absolutely. You see, seemingly the serpent had succeeded in his quest to have Adam's God-given authority and power. But let me remind some, uh, somebody today that God did curse Satan. He cursed him for all of time and eternity. The enemy of your and my soul is cursed above all livestock and all wild animals. Let me just tell you how low he is. He crawls on his belly. He eats dust for dinner. Will always be at odds. This is spiritual warfare with mankind, especially God's chosen people. They'll always be in conflict. He can never bring order. Never. He'll, there's always conflict, confusion around him. Look out. He's a defeated foe. He's a loser. Roars but has no real power other than what God tells him he can do. Uh, he's a snake, but he does not have a venomous bite. He can never win. It's impossible. He's destined for eternal damnation. Now, for you and I who are blood-bought and our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, we have eternal life in him. See, the events of the garden through one man left mankind in a seemingly hopeless situation. But I have good news for us today. That with God's judgment always comes mercy. With God's judgment always comes mercy. God's judgment on sin is always followed by his mercy. They, they, they run concurrently, if you will. Genesis 3 and 21 declares that the Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. This is his mercy. He did judge sin, but he also clothed them. The first action that God our Father performs after passing judgment was that he clothed Adam and his wife with garments of skin. These garments of skin were the first indication of the death of a living being. An animal was sacrificed so that that animal's skin could be taken so that God could cover them. This is how we see that they're no longer in the spirit, but in the natural. When we are in heaven, we don't need these bodies. We get new glorified bodies that are fit for heaven, that are fit for eternity. That means no more diabetes. That means no more overweight, uh, no more uh, uh, you know, diseases and sicknesses and so on and so forth. There's no more of that. We are covered now in his grace. We're covered now in the blood of Jesus. We're, we're, there's a different covering. And that skin of that animal was used to cover the nakedness of Adam and Eve. So now Adam and Eve were excommunicated from the spiritual realm as they knew it. And were now in perpetual condition, in a perpetual condition of spiritual separation from their creator and maker. In other words, God did not abandon them. But because God is holy and sin was introduced and had to be judged, Adam and Eve understand they were now aware of good and evil and they could not reside in the manifest presence of God because there is no evil in his presence. No flesh shall glorify, be glorified in my presence. 
Now, what can we learn from all of this as it relates to Moses and the children of Israel in Numbers 21? Pastor, I was wondering when you're going to get to that. Glad you asked. That was just my setup. Numbers 21 records that the people of Israel were impatient and frustrated because of the way. I don't know who you are, but just be patient. Just trust him. And the Bible says, and they complained and complained and complained. And they spoke against God and they spoke against their pastor. Uh-oh. Yeah. They hated the weight. They hated the decisions of the music pastor. They hated the the decisions of the pastor. They 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 hated the travel. They hated the the schedule. They hated the lack of water, the lack of food, and they they despised the manna, bread from heaven. God provided daily manna, and they despised it. I don't know who I'm talking to, but God has been good to you. God has provided for you. And it may not be what you want in the condition that you're in, in the state that you're in, in the wilderness where you find yourself, but, but God has provided. God has provided for you. He is Jehovah Jireh. You and I are his children. We're his child. Listen to me. God has provided. And, and there's something about gratitude. There's something about being thankful. There's something about praising and worshiping him. The like which they didn't do. They detested the bread of heaven. They loathed that one version says. And thought it was miserable. And God immediately judged them. Immediately. The Lord sent poisonous or venomous snakes among them. They bit the people and many Israelites died. This is why Paul says in, uh, in Corinthians about when you take of the Lord's Supper, when you take the, the, the table, don't take the elements unworthily. Many of you are in sin and you have, you're sick and you're, you've died because we, we take of uh, the body of Jesus Christ, which we think it's just a piece of bread or cracker or whatever, it's just juice or whatever, not understanding the sanctity of the moment, not understanding that it's worship, that it's worship. So the Lord sent poisonous, venomous snakes among them, and they bit the people, and many Israelites died. And the people came to Moses and said, We sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take these snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. I, I want you to I have a picture. I want my son to put that on the screen of what Moses uh, now, this is, I, I don't know exactly how it looked, and I looked at uh, a lot of different uh, uh, depictions of, of what this may have looked like, but true to form, I believe this is, uh, this is uh, 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 pretty accurate uh, as to what Moses did. It's also a symbol in the medical community, uh, uh, doctors, you understand, uh, EMTs, and so on and so first responders. Uh, it's a snake around a pole, which means healing or signifies healing. So the Lord said, make a replica of a venomous, a poisonous snake and attach it to a pole. Now, the reason why I chose the New Living Translation, because I love what it says. All who are bitten will live if... They simply look at it. God in his, in, in his judgment on their sin, he provided mercy. He provided a way for them to live. And yet many people died because they refused to look at it. 
Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. So the Bible says, so Moses made the snake and, uh, out of bronze. Bronze means judgment. Bronze is, is uh, brass. Bronze, it's, it's, it's a symbol or type of judgment. And he attached it to a pole. And anyone who was bitten by a snake could look at the bronze snake and be healed. I, I want to tell someone, I don't want to get ahead of myself because I'm just about done. Not a really long message, it's pretty simple. Jesus is your healer. You see, 700 years before Jesus was born, the prophet Isaiah, who referred to him, as the suffering Messiah or the sin-bearing Messiah. Isaiah 53, for those of you who are taking notes, Isaiah says, who has we believed our report? Oh, it's a choice. It's a choice. And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground, he has no form or comeliness when we see him. There's no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows acquainted with grief. And when we hid, as it were, our faces from him, he was despised. And we did not esteem him. There was no beauty to him as he hung on the cross is what he's pointing to. He's pointing to the cross. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted, but he was wounded. He's my healer. He's my deliverer. Good God that you are. I can sense the presence of God. Listen to me. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. God wants to heal you. I know I've said a lot today. Lord, help me put this uh, together as I close. Let's lock in. Let's make sense of this passage. I'm going to have my son put the camera back on the bronze snake. The bronze snake is a picture of Jesus on the cross at Calvary. Jesus is not the serpent. But scripture does declare that anyone who hangs on a tree is cursed. Jesus, my Lord and Savior, became a curse and an offering for sin. Well, Dr. Simon, where's the serpent in the, Old Te in the New Testament? The serpent is sin. The serpent is a metaphor for everything evil in God's sight, in God's righteous judgment on sin, past, present, future. And he placed it on his only begotten son, his judgment. Everything Isaiah said in Isaiah 53, he placed it all on him that he might atone and be a propitiation for our sins and the sins of humanity. It's the healing pole. It's the healing pole. I'm not talking about a stick with a snake on it. I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about your and my belief in what is uh, uh, written in the four gospels 
about the cross and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our healing pole is the cross at Calvary. The healing pole is that rugged cross that Jesus was nailed to and died for the sins of humanity. The serpent is a symbol and a metaphor for my sins, past, present, and future. The serpent is a symbol of the sins of mankind, past, present, future. And because of the cross, yeah, yeah, yeah. And because of Jesus, because of Jesus, we are healed of our spiritual diseases in Jesus' name. And because of the cross, we are healed of our physical diseases in Jesus' name. And because of the cross, I'm, I'm healed of my addictions. You're healed of your addictions and your maladies. Listen, in Jesus' name, because of Jesus, I have eternal life. Because of Jesus, we can repent of our sins. And the, 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 the justice, the judgment that I deserve, that you deserve, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. God has made a way. He's made a way. I know what Adam and Eve did. I know what Moses did in the wilderness and many refused to look up. I want to tell you, if you look up and if you repent of your sins, God, who is rich in mercy, he will save you. He will cover you. Because you see, the blood of Jesus, for Adam and Eve, it was an animal. And God clothed them in the skin of an animal. But for us, Jesus who died on the cross for our sins, his blood was shed that it might cover, that it might cover us, that it might cover us from the judgment that is due to Henry Simon for all of my sins, past, present, and future. Let me tell you, if you believe by faith, <laughs> if you believe by faith, you can be saved today. In the name of Jesus. The only thing is, is what damned a lot of people in the wilderness was their refusal to look up. You see, snakes are seen as lethal and cursed and evil. Much like the serpent that my son showed you, the bronze serpent. No one likes these these serpents. Serpents are a uh, depiction or symbol of evil, of the devil. It was a serpent that came to Adam and Eve, a serpent. I don't like them, and yet I understand that they play an important role in the ecosystem of the Earth's environment. I, 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 I get it. But as I speak to you today, and uh, as it, it pertains to the spiritual realm, snakes play an important role that is controlled and maintained by God. Listen to me. Stop giving glory to the devil. Give your glory to God where the power is. You better come next week. You get ready for part two. Listen, the enemy cannot do anything except God allows him to. Some theologians and scholars believe that there were so many people who died because they refused to simply look up. Can you put the picture, the camera on the on the bronze snake for me just for a moment just as as I as I close <clears throat> the Israelites and many ancient people civilizations of that time 
in the deserts like that, you know, there were many snakes and, and some civilizations worshipped them um, because of their sheer power to kill people. I know Pharaoh worshipped them in Egypt. Listen, the children of Israel, God, Moses did what God commanded him to do. But the children, many in, uh, of the children of Israel refused to look, to simply look up at such a detestable and cursed figure. They refused and died. And so it is today. There are those who refuse to believe in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of their sins. The cross at Calvary and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is available to you if you just simply look up and repent of your sins. It's just that simple. If you believe in your heart and confess him with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved, you shall be healed of your sins. I hope this simple message um, has made some semblance of sense to someone. That person, you think you're so wise, you think you know everything. Pastor, I'm gonna attack you on Facebook and so on and so forth because this is uh, not practical. This is, you know, so on and so forth. I would tell you, I love you, and may the peace of God be between the two of us. But I pray that you believe. I pray that you believe. You will receive a new covering, a new way of thinking. You will receive his righteousness through the blood of Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son he gave willingly and Jesus willingly did what his father asked this is that's it's perfect submission perfect submission to the will of God oh that we can submit perfectly to him oh that we can submit our wills I struggle because I want things my way and I wrestle with him. Ultimately, he wins. But I'm learning the closer I come to him, stop resisting. Stop wrestling. Just do what I say. Can I pray for you? Can I pray for you? Can I pray you into the kingdom of God? Good God that you are. Whoever you are, wherever you are around this earth, whenever you're watching this, I don't care if it's three, four months down the road a year down the road and you've just come across this message still holds true all you have to do is repent of your sins and believe and it's as simple as that and you're saved pray with me Jesus come into my heart be the Lord of my life I repent of my sins I turn away from wickedness I turn away from the wicked ways of this world and I turn to you Lord, my judgment uh, uh, begs condemnation and eternal damnation, but I receive Jesus as my covering. I receive Jesus as my covering. I receive eternal life through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Listen, if you pray something like that, if you meant it in your heart, you confess it. Listen, listen. Uh, I'm going to see you in heaven. I may not ever meet you on this earth, but I'll see you in heaven. I'll meet you in heaven because I, I do believe as a pastor that we, we, God will give us the ability to see all that we've touched and impacted. He's just that big. He's just that good. Amen and amen. Amen. That was so good. That was so good. I, 
I, I missed teaching last week, but you know what, God, uh, he gave me a, a chance uh, to to reset and rewind, uh, so to speak, uh, so that uh, I can uh, uh, preach and teach today. He's so good. God is so good. God is so good. Amen and amen. Lift your hands to the Lord. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. That's all he wanted the Israelites to do. Just trust me. Just look at the serpent. It doesn't make sense. Just look. It doesn't make sense to believe. Just believe. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with a hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. I am so, so privileged, so blessed to have had the opportunity to come into uh, at least your hearing, your home, wherever you are. Um, I pray God's exponential blessings upon you. I pray God's very best, his mercy, his son into your life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, this has been a message about the healing pole, the wonders of the cross, the wonders of the cross. Stay tuned for next week, part two, part two. Come back and see us, pray for us. We're lifting uh, you up as well as we lift up the son of God, as we lift him up. He says, if you lift me up, I will draw all men unto me. Amen and amen. Such a privilege, such a blessing. God bless you. Happy Sunday to you. I pray that you have an awesome week ahead in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you.